Hey, what's up everybody? We want to welcome you to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Daily Recap, where we give you a recap of all of the hot topics that we covered that day. You can catch them in their long format and also catch it fully streaming for free on Apple Podcasts. So as you guys know, the playoffs are kicking off uh, this Saturday. I'm hyped, <clears throat> you know, for some more, in- for some interesting games uh, finally. But one of the series I'm really keyed in on is the series between the Los Angeles Clippers uh, and the Dallas Mavericks. Now, going into it, I think six out of every 10 people believe the Mavericks are going to come out victorious in this series. Uh, at least that's the information that we got from the poll that we ran with thousands and thousands of uh, people voting on that poll. Uh, but I personally believe that the Clippers have a chance. But a lot of that is contingent upon the availability of Kawhi Leonard, who missed the final eight games of the regular season due to inflammation in his knee. So we've been kind of prying the coach, the the, the Clippers head coach, Ty Lu, to get some information, but he's been pretty tight lipped until yesterday when I came across a show, I think from Hoops Pharaoh or something like that, where they they published a video of general manager and I think basketball president, I think it's general manager, basketball president, Lawrence Frank, where he specifically spoke about the status of Kawhi Leonard in terms of his availability of a round one versus the Dallas Mavericks. And he was and he was talking, you know, he wasn't a hundred percent doom and gloom, but it was a bit disheartening that, you know, we couldn't get a concrete update on whether or not Kawhi Leonard is going to be available for game one. So for those of you who didn't hear what uh, Lawrence Frank had to say, I want to play for you now and then come back and react to this comment. Take a listen to what Lawrence Frank, uh, Lawrence Frank had to say there. I'm here just to talk about uh, Kawhi. No real, real update per se, but I know obviously it's, you know, it's a, uh, a question you guys ask T. Lou all the time. So just want to be a bit of context. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to fire away. Um, Obviously, Kawhi's had been dealing with inflammation for almost three weeks uh, in his right knee. Uh, He's doing everything, our medical staff is doing everything uh, to get the inflammation down so he can play. Uh, Progress has been made, but more progress needs to, the inflammation needs to continue to reduce so he can do functional basketball movements. Um, uh, We're hopeful it's going to get there. Uh, In terms of practice participation, I know you guys have asked, Ty, he's able to do all the mental preparation part of it, the film study, the personnel review, uh, hasn't done any contact. um, And we'll just take it day by day. And I know from your guys' standpoint, you know, you guys uh, have to ask the questions. The one thing I, you know, share with you is that inflammation is unpredictable. So it's, we'd love to have a crystal ball and Kawhi would love to have a crystal ball and know exactly on this day, but just, you just control what you can control and Hopefully, hopefully the inflammation reduces in a short amount of time, and, and he's back on the court. Oh, That's the goal. So there's a report today that he received an injection that me to reduce the inflammation. Okay, yeah, we don't comment on any specific treatments. Obviously, what I share with you, Ohm, is he's doing everything he can, and we're doing everything we can medically. Um, but specific treatments, you know, regardless of the player, we would never comment. Can this be likened to the absence he had a couple? I think last year, uh, I think he played a couple games. Uh, that had inflammation that he was out for about three, three, four weeks. Would be like in, kind of, kind of with that. Uh, different, yeah, different. Um, the, uh, the, you know, everything structurally is in a really, really good place. So um, this is just, like I said, it's just some very, very stubborn inflammation. What was the timeline of when this kind of started? I mean, when did you guys notice it was something you tried to play through, play on it all? Uh, just towards right at the end of the East Coast trip. It's he'll be he'll be questionable for Sunday. Um, like I said, it's and I'm trying to be as transparent as possible. It's no, it's just very unpredictable. Um, so like if things continue to get better and better, there's a chance. Um, so we'll be hopeful, but I you know just to get ahead of it, he'll be he'll be questionable for game one. You guys have to. I mean. It'd be hard to just throw him in if he hasn't done a lot of like contact out here yet, right? Yeah, it's Thursday though, right? So in terms of like based on where we're heading, is it possible he could play? Sure, it's it's possible. It's Thursday, and like I said, with each day, we'll know more and more. Yeah. Yeah, so but obviously, it's the playoffs, so like the stakes are high. But you guys are always very careful with your athletes and guys like the wise. So I mean, is, it, is there any differentiate? Look, if this is a Tuesday in October versus now. 
Uh, look, we'll never put an athlete on the court if they're at risk for injury. And as you guys know, especially you guys who are around quite every day, this guy lives for these moments. You know, he played 68 games this year. Uh, he's done a ton of heavy lifting and he prepares himself to be his best when his best is needed. So he's gonna do like he has everything in his power to get on the court. Obviously, if, if he's not healthy to play at a certain moment, then he won't be out there. And that's kind of been since Kawhi's tenure, and that's kind of what we've shared through the course of this, is that when Kawhi's healthy, he plays. Uh, and some things you can't control, regardless of how meticulous he is with his body and everything that goes into playing, they're just, you can only control what you can control, and you kind of got to surrender to the things you can. So if he is healthy to play. Trip, uh, has there been any level of, of setback, or has everything been smooth ever since he <clears throat> stopped playing um, after the Charlotte game? Yeah, I think the you know thing with it is like I said, is you're you're hopeful that the inflammation. I think we've seen some some progress here recently, and we're hoping to that it continues to go in that direction. So you heard what he said, right? He's saying that most likely Kawhi Leonard is going to be, I think, questionable for uh, the kickoff on kickoff tip off on uh, Sunday. I believe they start their series on Sunday versus the Dallas Mavs in LA. But then as I was doing some research, I also came across some all, some some other information from Shams uh Sharinia, or Karinia, I hope I pronounce his name properly, where he where he was giving a status update and it was also published on Bleacher Report where he essentially said that there's actually growing optimism around Kawhi Leonard returning, but most importantly he said that Kawhi Leonard has been participating in some practice and some physical activities. So what we want to do is want to quickly play what he had to say. It's only about a minute or so, and then really get into the show. Take a listen to what he had to say here. What do you have in regards between the Clippers and the Mavs in that series? My sense is there is cautious optimism that Kawhi Leonard, who's been out since March 31st, will be ready for game one against the Mavericks on Sunday. Sources tell me Leonard received an injection in his knee to alleviate inflammation in that knee. And after a period of rest, he's been ramping up. He's been getting on-court workouts in over the last week or so. Some pretty uh, intense workouts Kawhi Leonard has been doing. And he has been participating in practice this week as the Clippers continue to ramp him up for that game on Sunday. But this is a, a big postseason as well for the Clippers. Kawhi Leonard, James Harden, Paul George, Russell Westbrook. This is a team that obviously has championship aspirations. Facing off against the Dallas Mavericks team that's arguably been one of the best in the league in the second half of the season around Kyrie Irving, Luka Doncic, P.J. Washington, Daniel Gafford, and, and, and a host of, of rotation players that they're really building this team around. So you heard all the information there. What are my thoughts? Well... As I've been following the news, Ty Lu said he's been kind of doing stuff that's more related to scouting reports and stuff like that. I didn't hear Ty Lu mention anything about any physical, you know, uh, Kawhi Leonard practice, uh, participating in any physical activities. Um, though Ty Lu said they're going to scrimmage, I believe, today, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's that. I've, Ty Lu said that. Lawrence Frank said, you know, Kawhi Leonard, it's unclear. But in the case of Shams, he's saying that, no, he's been taking place in some physical activity so one could be one thing could, that could possibly be true that shams is lying uh or um ty Lu and lawrence frank are being pretty tight-lipped to keep the mavericks off balance where they don't know if Kawhi leonard is going to be you see if they don't know Kawhi leonard is going to be available then they're going to probably game plan for him not being available and if a tip-off you hear that he's going to be available then it may throw a little wrench in there uh, you know, in their preparation, but I'm 100% sure that Jason Kidd and those guys are going to prepare either way. But it may be a psychological edge that the Clippers want to get by kind of catching the Maverick, uh, the Dallas Mavericks off guard uh, by just bringing Kawhi Leonard out, you know, on the day of a tip off and you just see him there versus, you know, hearing in advance that, hey, listen, Kawhi Leonard is going to be available. So to me, it's still a bit disheartening because we can't get a concrete answer out of the organization and hey it's up to them you know they it's up to them to, to 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 decide whether or not they want to put that out there um my hunch is and i could be wrong i have been wrong in the past but my hunch is i think Kawhi is going to be available if you listen to lawrence frank he's like this is thursday it's thursday well you have friday you have saturday which is today and tomorrow and then they kick off on sunday and then i think they're going to be at home so there's not going to be really any traveling uh that's going to be taking place so just me trying to be a bit optimistic I believe that he's going to be available, although it is incredible 
quite frankly, to be back in this situation again a year later when essentially Kawhi Leonard left the playoffs after just two games. So uh, hopefully everything is okay. Um, I have the Clippers winning that series. Uh, if he is available, we're going to get to our prediction show a little bit later today. So you definitely want to stick around for that. Uh, with it. So as you guys know, the playoffs are kicking off on, uh, uh, what is it, on Saturday. Obviously, we got some more games tonight between the Kings and the Pelicans. They're trying to decide who's going to be the eighth seed. I've already made my decision on who's going to win that game. So I'm going to be basing my bracket based off of who I think is going to get those final spots uh, in, the, in the NBA playoffs. So what we want to do is actually, before we kick this off, we want to put up the, the, the what is it, the playoff picture for you guys. And we're getting this from NBA.com. So you can just look at it as things currently stand right now. Uh, uh, you know, in the Eastern Conference, we have the Celtics as the one seed. We're waiting to see who's going to be the winner between the Bulls and the Hawks for that seed. Then we have the Cavs, Mavs in the second bracket. Then we have uh, the Mavericks, uh, uh, Magic. Then you have the Bucks, Pacers, Knicks, 76ers out west. We have the Thunder. We're going to see who's going to win uh, that game between the Thunder and the Pelican. I mean, not the Thunder, the, the Kings, excuse me, and the Pelicans versus the Thunder. Then you have the Clippers, Mavs, and you have the Timberwolves, Suns. Then you have the Nuggets, Lakers. So y'all have seen it. Good. Keep a picture of it in your mind, whatever it is. So this show has a little bit of context and you guys can see that. So let me start off with my Eastern Conference bracket. First of all, let's start out in the East. Eastern Conference round one, and I'm going to give you guys the amount of games. So we have the Knicks versus the Sixers in round one. I have the Knicks winning that series in seven games. I know some people are going to be like Joel Embiid and all that. I'm riding with New York. I grew up in New York. I got a lot of friends in New York. New York used to be my stomping ground growing up in the Bronx and Yonkers. I'm riding with New York. I want to see the Knicks do good. And also, I want to hear my, you know, my New York cats just getting crazy in the comments and talking all type of trash. I just want to see it, right? New York, New York needs to do good. And I'm happy that New York is even in this thing and they got a chance. So shout out to New York. Shout out to everybody in New York. Shout out to all the people I used to know in New York. I'm riding with New York right now in the Eastern Conference. So I got the Knicks in seven. Then we have the next series between the Bucks and the Pacers. Uh, I got the Pacers winning that series, believe it or not, in six games. As you guys know, Giannis Antetokounmpo is going to miss the first two games of that series. Uh, so they're going to be without him for, for two games, which increases the chances of the, the Pacers going up to uh, 2-0. And then, of course, even though they're starting on the road, I think the Bucks, if I'm looking at the standing, yeah, the Bucks are the three, the Pacers are the six. I'm going to give that... I'm going to give that series edge to the Pacers there. And I got the Pacers winning that series. Some people may view it as an upset. I don't. Pacers in six. Then we got the Cavs versus the Mavericks. Um, in that series, I actually have the Cavaliers in seven. I don't know um, if everyone is going to be available uh, for that series. Uh, Donovan Mitchell and all of that. But I got the Cavs winning that series in seven. Then we got the Celtics and whoever. It doesn't matter. I have the Celtics advancing. And I don't care who it is. The Celtics are going to advance. Uh, to the to the to the to the semifinals. Then we move to the semifinals. In the semifinals, I got the Knicks versus the Pacers, and I'm riding with the Knicks to win that series in seven in seven games. Some people are gonna be like, "Oh, you were just saying that because I'm riding with the Knicks." It is what it is. I got the Knicks winning that series. Cavs versus Celtics. I got the Celtics winning that series in six games, which means that I got the, the I got the Knicks. Going to the Eastern Conference Finals versus the Boston Celtics going to the finals. And to my New York uh, crowd that's watching this show, this is where I have to bring you the bad news. Because in the Eastern Conference Finals, I actually have the Celtics beating the Knicks in six games. Which means that the Celtics are going to advance to the finals to represent the Eastern Conference. Okay, so let's move to the Western Conference, right? This is where a lot of the fun is going to be. In the Western Conference, if we look at the playoff picture, we want to put it up for you guys again. Uh, in the West, we're going to have the Thunder in round one. Let me just see how I did my bracket. No, no, no. I started off with the Lakers. So let's start off with the Lakers Nuggets series, which is one that everybody's talking about. Lakers versus Nuggets. I have the Nuggets winning that series in five games. Some people are saying the Lakers is going to go six. The Lakers are going to win. Oh, the Nuggets are going to sweep. I got the Nuggets winning in five games. My rationale is the following. I think Denver is going to take the first two games at home. Right now, they're seven, seven and a half point favorites to win game one. 
then I think LA is going to win game three back at home. And I think Denver is going to find a way to get game four. And then Denver closes this thing out in five. That's just how I see it going. So I got the I got the Nuggets in five. Maz versus Clippers. This is a very interesting one. Y'all know I'm supporting the Clippers. Uh, uh, so my prediction is going to be the following. If Kawhi Leonard is healthy, and I think he will be, I have the Clippers winning that series in six games. Some people will probably turn off the video. Oh, you're Kawhi. That's what I'm rolling with, right? Then we move to the next series. I got the Thunder versus the Kings. This is where it gets interesting. I got the Sacramento Kings winning that series in seven games. Some people probably be like, oh, you bugging. They go back. That's what I think. I think the Kings could be a dangerous team. Last year, the Warriors knocked them out. I think they're going to I think they're going to win that series. Wolves versus Suns, which is another series I cannot wait to see. Uh, and I got the Suns winning that series in seven games. So if we move to the Western Conference Finals, I got the Clippers versus the Kings, the Nuggets versus the Suns in the Western Conference Semifinals. Then in the, in the conference semifinals, I got the Clippers beating, beating the Kings in six games. The Nuggets versus the Suns, I got the Nuggets in six. And now we get to the Western Conference Finals. And I have the Clippers versus the Nuggets. And who do I have winning that series? I got the Nuggets winning that series in seven games. And I think that the Nuggets are going to eliminate the Clippers. Yeah, yeah, it's not fun to say it, but uh, Nikola Jokic is a bad boy, man. And I don't know how the Clippers are going to account for that matchup. The Clippers have beaten them. They beat them. I think the last time they played them, they beat them without Kawhi Leonard, which was extremely impressive. Uh, but I don't know. I don't want to bet against the champs. I like Kawhi and all of them. Those are my guys. But something is telling me that the Nuggets are just going to be tough, man. I want to pick the Clippers, but I hope the Clippers win, but I'm going to roll with the Nuggets, which means that the Nuggets are going to be rep representing the Western Conference to go back to the NBA Finals. And in the finals, we're going to see the Nuggets versus the Boston Celtics. And in that series, I have the Denver Nuggets winning against Boston in six games, which means that the Denver Nuggets are going to be back-to-back -back championships this year. And Nikola Jokic is going to do something pretty incredible, which is win the regular season MVP and the finals MVP uh, in the same season, right? And I got him and the Nuggets winning their second title. And you know what? Um, if I'm being honest with you, if the Clippers go out in the West, I'm going to be riding with the Nuggets. I like Nikola Jokic, right? Kawhi Leonard is my guy. I'm happy that he made the USA Olympic team. Shout out to him. Hopefully he can help them win. For God's sakes, I don't know why he's a reserve. I think he should be starting over some of them dudes, but whatever. Um, but uh, and I think they needed him. And I think that I think Grant Hill and those guys made a better decision getting Kawhi over Kyrie Irving because you needed a guy guard on the side on, on the wing. They can, I mean, a guard a forward on the wing that can play defense, knock down shots and really affect the game in a positive way and gives you guys some more size on the perimeter. So I like that move. Some people felt Kyrie got uh, uh, what is it? Um, robbed or whatever it is but to me i got the nuggets winning so i had actually finished um coming up with the shows we're going to produce today and i was working on the brackets now we have that coming out later today our playoff brackets if you want to check that out we have that coming out that'll probably be our last show uh that we published so i open up my instagram and i see a clip from because i follow nba on espn espn bleacher report follow all those, those accounts and I see a video get sent to me on oh, my timeline or whatever uh, from NBA and ESPN talking about no ESPN, NBA and ESPN, their account uh, with LeBron James. Right. And it's LeBron James with his son shooting in his driveway at night. It's LeBron. I think the, the person that was holding the camera was Bryce uh, and then Bronny and then LeBron himself. And they're just shooting shots and they're talking, talking trash back to another, just having fun uh, with his kids, which is pretty, pretty cool. Right. Um, so shout out to him and, and all the dads out there having fun with their kids. Shout out to y'all. So they're there. They're kind of shooting and the son is like, nah, you trash. You're going to miss this. You're going to miss that or whatever, 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 whatever the case may be. And then it got to the point where LeBron, you know, LeBron, man, LeBron, son, you, I, I see you. I saw what you did. I saw what you did. He, you know, his son is recording it. He goes, I'm the GOAT. 
you know, I'm the GOAT. What do you mean? I'm the GOAT. And he keeps emphasizing it in the camera. I'm the GOAT. I'm the GOAT. I'm the GOAT. And I was like, oh, I already know where this is going to go. ESPN already posted it. So what we want to do is we want to play LeBron and his sons interacting. And I want you guys to listen to where he calls himself the GOAT multiple times. Uh, and then we're going to come back and get into this show. Take a listen to them here. Are you trash? What do you mean trash? You trash. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> That's a lucky shot. Man, lucky shot. That's a lucky shot. shot. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Huh? I'll shoot it one hand. How is it trash? When you I'm suck, bro. You suck. I suck. Mwah. <laughs> 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 you, bro. All right, man. Watch this. Hey, this one my left hand, too. I'm not. <laughs> Get it out the net. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Green. Oh, my God. Bro, it's... <sighs> I just not going a year, literally. <laughs> it's not going in. I don't know. Why are you tripping? Why are you acting like that? Like you doing? <laughs> this is what I do. Bro. This is what I go. This bro. is what I go. Hey, bro. I'm goat, bro. Bro. G-O-A-T. What are you talking about? Stop, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me, man. <laughs> this is what I do, man. All right, give me the ball. <laughs> give me the ball for what? Oh, when it go in the net. <laughs> Piss it again, so it go point five. Man, I'm I'm right on you. No, Just worry about making the shot. Yeah. Making the shot? yeah, yeah. Worry about making the shot. You talking point yeah. point five? What? Right, uh, just... nah. <laughs> that was too much rim, champ. Nah, yeah, you count that. That's too much rim. All right. Count that one. Huh? Hold on. Give me ball. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro. I'm just saying, bro. Hood dribble. Man, yo, jumper is cheeks. Bro, you still got the ball. <laughs> why you blaming it? Why you, uh-uh. There you go. I mean, that was decent. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mid-range. Yeah, go oh, so you're a mid-range assassin now. All right. Yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Your, your rhythm going now? Nah, but it's cool though. I just get it right back. You know, your rhythm going now? Yeah, you just you just shoot it. All right, well, just shoot it there. I mean, right. just shoot it there. If that's what you're talking. You just shoot it. <laughs> so you heard what they had to say. Here are my thoughts. I got a few. First of all, the aspect of LeBron calling himself the GOAT. If you're there among your friends and family, hell yeah, call yourself the GOAT. I don't see nothing wrong with that. You're with your family. Talk your talk. Say what's really in your heart. So I support LeBron on that time. Like I support him there. What is more interesting, however, is two things. The first thing is if you see, if you saw the clip, LeBron starts to look into the camera, look into the camera and he's saying it. That's the first part. The second part is how did ESPN get a hold of that clip? How did that clip, how did ESPN get a hold of that clip? Now, I don't follow his kids or nothing like that. So I don't know. Maybe he posted it on his account and they picked it up. I don't know because I don't follow these people's kids. I don't follow anybody's kids. But um, so that's what I'm wondering about. Because if he knew it was on his IG, uh, I think LeBron probably knew that that clip would probably get picked up and go out there and get a lot of talk and get, get a lot of conversation and traction. To me, listen, um, LeBron saying that, I've heard other great players say that. I've heard Michael Jordan say, listen, I'm the greatest player of all time when he was talking about a camp that he had playing against. Oh, my God. This guy was a former Memphis Grizzly who was talking trash to him at his camp. I forgot his name. I can see his face. I just forgot his name. And Jordan told him, like, listen, I'm the best player in the world. Like, da, da, da. So he told him that. So I've heard Jordan say that. I remember when Kobe went to the Drew League and he was talking trash to, like, the crowd. And I think Kobe says something to the greatest ever. Like, I think he said me, Wilt, Mike, or something like that. I don't remember. But I remember Kobe Bryant saying that, right? But in that case, Kobe was saying it to somebody. He was trash talking in the crowd. And he ended up getting recorded, right? It wasn't like it was a totally different thing. But I say all of that to say that great players, especially players at that level, top five guys, 
most likely feel that they're the greatest player of all time. I'm sure if you caught Kareem Abdul-Jabbar sitting down somewhere talking to somebody, he'll probably tell you I'm the greatest player of all time, right? So I don't think that that's anything weird or strange, right? I don't have any issue with that or take any exception uh, to any of that. Now, in terms of LeBron actually saying he's a GOAT, well, listen, LeBron is a media, uh, you know, he's a media, uh, 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 what's the word, savant. Uh, he knows how to manipulate the media. He knows there's going to be conversation. Of course, he knows you're going to have people in the media running up, twerking it up, slapping each other with honey, you know, running up and down the hallways, busting it down, shaking it over, knocking people's drinks all over the place. They're going to be getting hype. You, I'm sure some of them are going to be producing live like, yo, my man said, yo, hold up, hold up. Pass me the honey. You heard what my man said? They're going to dap it up with a handful of honey. <laughs> Oh my God, man. They're going to be dapping each other up with honey in their hands, talking about, you know, you heard what LeBron had to say and all of that. So listen, um, people are definitely going to disagree with him because now it's in a public forum. Now you have a right to disagree with him. If that's what he said to his son and it wasn't on camera, I'm cool with it. Right? If he got caught on camera saying it, I'm cool with it. I'm just also saying that if you say that, a lot of people are going to be pushing back. Right? And I think it's I think it was I think it is within their right because most people don't feel that way. Let me get into this story. So yesterday I was doing some research preparing for one of our shows that we're gonna publish on um IG, right? And if you're not following us on Instagram, be sure to follow our Dreamers Pro account. It's called Dreamers Pro, same name as the channel, and follow me on IG. My handle is C-T-A-B-A-N-Z. So as I was doing that, I then started doing some more research around MJ. And then I came across a startling stat uh, that I decided. I said, you know what? Let me put up a quiz on the channel to see how many people are going to guess the right answer. So the quiz was essentially the following. And thus far in 15 hours, 13,000 people have voted. So you can go ahead and drop your vote and or read what people said. So in the 13 hours, it's generated 13, uh, excuse me, 15 hours generated 13,000 answers. Um, and 566 people have liked the poll and 283 comments. And I'm sure more people are going to be voting on the poll. But the poll essentially asked the following question. Who's the only NBA player to average 30 points per game and win a defensive player of the year uh, in that same series? And we put uh, uh, in, in that same year and we put four options, LeBron James, Gary Payton, Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. Uh, and 89 percent of the people ended up getting the right answer, which I'm going to get into right now. So. Of the people that voted, 89% of them actually voted uh, the correct answer, which was Michael Jordan. And here's the explanation. It says, Michael Jordan is the only player in, in the NBA to win uh, Defensive Player of the Year while averaging 35 points per game in a season. Jordan did that in the 1988 season and also led the league in steals that year. He won the regular season MVP. He made the all first defensive team while playing all 82 games that season. I said GOAT and it will never, ever, ever, ever be close. Now, I want to read some of the responses because people get fired up about this. One person said Mike gave him the business on both sides of the court. Another person said MJ is the GOAT. Uh, another person said the real uh, 23. Um, another uh, person uh, said scoring champion and defensive player of the year, of course, is MJ. Another person said, um, if you got this wrong, this one cracked me up. If you got this wrong and worse, answer LeBron, <laughs> God help you. So I laughed at that one. Um, another person said, and and uh, Michael Jordan is the GOAT. Let me read a few other comments. Uh, the greatest of all time, Jordan, shout out to Braun and Kobe. Glove was an animal too. Um, this one said this was too easy. Uh, the other person said the ram, meaning uh, like the goat or whatever. Um, you know, and some other people kind of disagree with me saying, you know, this, this and that. Oh, somebody said, didn't he get swept? Uh, didn't he get swept first round uh, that year? And then another person tried to borrow my swag, but it didn't work out. He tried to leave a comment there about the honey. It didn't really work out. So, um, you know, a lot of people knew this and some people were just basically, basically hailing Jordan like, yo, uh, Jordan was that dude. Let me say this. It's something I've said periodically in the past, but I want to say it once more of all of the players that I have researched 
um, in terms of the NBA, Jordan is the only NBA player that the more you research him, the the freakier uh, his accomplishments get. It's it's really it's like going down a rabbit hole. The more you research about the guy, the more you discover about the guy, you realize like, bro, this dude, this dude was on another level. And it makes you begin to wonder when we hear people having these conversations, is Kobe as good as Jordan? Is LeBron as good as Jordan? Is this person as good as Jordan? It makes you begin to realize that the reason we're only really having these conversations, uh, I think, is just to have something to talk about. This just this morning, I was watching Get Up and they were reacting to a comment that Stephen A. Smith made yesterday that if LeBron beats the Nuggets and goes on to win the championship, uh, you know, he will consider, you know, LeBron is a goat and all of this stuff. They're doing all of this, I personally believe, for, <clears throat> uh, you know, for views and to get money, get people talking and all of that stuff. Because when you scrutinize what Jordan has done carefully and you look at the full picture in terms of his impact on the game, what he did on the court, his accomplishments, his play, uh, watching him with the eye test, you realize that there's no player that kind of has all of those boxes checked. Right. There's some that have certain areas, some that have other areas, but the entire body of work, the entire package, a very few do. And it's and it's telling that, for instance, now, since they like to compare LeBron to Jordan, Jordan played effectively 13 seasons, 15 on the calendar. Uh, and LeBron is what playing in 21. And they're still trying to talk about can LeBron catch Jordan? That shows you just how far he is ahead. If we're still going 20, 21 years. And they're still talking about, can you catch this guy? It shows you just how far he has been ahead. Now, personally, and I don't say this to annoy LeBron fans or any other fans, I don't personally believe it's close. Even with the eye test, it's not It's not close, folks. There, I mean, LeBron is athletic. Kobe is this guy. Vince Carter, I've seen him all. There's nobody like Jordan, man. There's nobody. Jordan, if you get a move off on Jordan, you become famous. Allen Iverson's most popular move was when he crossed up Michael Jordan. That's his most notable move was when he caught MJ slipping. Jordan, to me, listen, uh, is the undisputed go. It's going to take a lot to 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 really topple this guy. Um, and I think a lot of people came to the conclusion that Jordan was going to be is the greatest player of all time, even before he won championships. His championships just further solidified it. I think that to make an argument against Jordan, you'd have to be reaching for straws. Uh, and that's not really a good way to build an argument where you have to now come up with hypotheticals. Well, if this happened, if that happened, if this, like, come on, stop. Let's talk about what has happened. And to me, as a Kobe guy, you know, I used to think him and Kobe were close. I mean, in terms of their play, their Kobe's very, very close to Jordan. But Jordan has Kobe beat in certain areas. He is more athletic. I believe Jordan was a bit stronger. I believe Jordan had better uh, control uh, in the air, especially finishing through contact. Kobe would finish through contact, but Jordan would really, really like Jordan would put his chest into you, and not, and and just and just straight up body you at the at the uh, at the rim. Uh, I believe Jordan was a better defender, although Kobe has nine all first defensive uh, selections. But um, you know, I give I give I give I give Jordan the edge in terms of bigger moments kobe's had some bigger moments but overall i think jordan is better and uh kobe wasn't able to get kobe wasn't able to three-peat two times you know jordan was jordan kobe led the league in scoring two times jordan did it 10 you know jordan led the league in steals three times kobe never led the league in steals you know so to me i think is i think it's jordan although in terms of play and watching them play basketball if you put them in a the gym kobe would definitely hold his own and from a psychological level kobe was definitely on the same playing field with jordan you couldn't psychologically intimidate kobe so to me i got kobe there but all this other stuff i don't really get it but that's your man michael jordan